is Frost speaking. You're watching Impact Channel. Hey guys, we are here with Frost from 1349. Nice to meet you, sir. Nice to meet you, too. So, uh, there was a four years gap between Demonor and the Massive Cauldron of Chaos. Do you feel personally these longer breaks between the albums beneficial? I don't see it as a longer break. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to remember that sometimes there are touring cycles of varying lengths in between mm -hmm. albums. And it happened that two albums were released without any proper touring activity in between them, which was Revelations of the Black Flame and, and mm -hmm. Demonor. So the touring activities after the Monoir took a while. Mm -hmm. It was mainly US touring and you know going to some new territories for us. But still that cycle was going on for quite a while and we felt that we better start writing new material when you know we had the monoir a little out of our system. Because I think it's easier to focus on you know starting writing a new chapter when you are not still messing around with the old songs uh, and we definitely want each and out each and every album to have a feeling and a vibe of their own and if you allow time for musical maturity to take place that is definitely beneficial but it wasn't really so that we wanted to, you know, wait. It was more like allowing some time to pass, allowing time for the touring cycle with the Monoir to to be done with, and then give the writing process its due time. The recording processes itself took some time. Uh, it also happened that there was one year passing in between the recording and the actual release, so that kind of explains four years but to us you know there wasn't really any kind of hiatus or, or break at all the name 1349 was inspired by historical times are you interested in history yes well, there are several of us in the band that are very interested in history and that are fascinated and motivated by, by streams and, and events that belong to the field of history 3049 points to a very very grim event and the menacing feel that the year has mm -hmm. for a Norwegian uh, for Norwegians it's that kind of menacing feel that we want people to associate with the name 3049 as we set out to make uh, a kind of music that has the grimness which is dark and foreboding mm -hmm. And it's uh, also a name that sets us a little apart, which is a beneficial thing, even if that wasn't something that we strived for achieving with with that band name. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, when uh, when it occurred to Raven that we should have that name, uh, this was even before my time, though. Um, and I said to him as a friend and not mm -hmm. a member of the band that I thought that the name is excellent mm -hmm. go for it later I became part of that but, uh, but even without knowing that I would have anything to do with it I found the name to mm -hmm. be uh, ingenious I liked it a lot and if you have any chance to go back to time and spend some time you know in different eras and ages where would you like to go back to spend some time I think each and Every era has uh, their uh, um, well. They would be fascinating mm -hmm. in 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 each way. I mean, if you went back to to uh, the period of uh, of uh, early mankind, mm -hmm. like you know, man as we know today. Is a species that is around 100,000 years old. Before mm -hmm. that, there were other types of hominoids. Mm -hmm. But uh, like to be part of what actually went on in those mm -hmm. very, very 
early human settlements to see how things were actually sold, how they managed to to control fire and eventually start to to uh, control their uh, environment mm -hmm. and to hunt down animals that were basically, you know, too fast or too big or too strong for humans to hunt down, but they managed due to, you know, group efforts and all that and how the organization happened. That was very, very fascinating and I'm reading a little about ancient civilizations just now. I read that on the tour bus. Mm -hmm. uh, so now I'm like a little bit there in my mindset. Um, so uh, I think uh, quite a bit about that, how they managed in those early times before anything was being told how to do it like mm -hmm. what kind of instincts and what kind of evolution actually mm -hmm. ruled that very early era i mean i could mention many other examples but just for now i would say like the prehistoric times mm -hmm. the early the early settlements of human times and back in the 90s where all these church burnings and scandals happened in Norway around the black metal scene. Did you experience any kind of negative feedback from people outside of the metal scene? For example, did they try to bully you in a bar or something? Yeah, of course, people uh, felt very alienated by this this whole mm. phenomenon that suddenly took place uh, among them. Mm. So, which isn't that weird, actually, when you think about it. Mm. Uh, but on the other hand, how fascinating it was to be there when you know such a such an extreme and creative genre was born. Mm -hmm. We still have to remember how long it is ago now. This is like you know perhaps more than a generation ago. Um, we're out touring and we're working really hard as musicians, and it feels a little weird, you know, to to be asked questions about what thing, what kind of things were going on when most people uh, in the black metal scene were like, you know, 17 or 18 year olds, because that was the reality of things. Um, I heard that you were denied to enter North America a few years ago due to some bar fight in the 90s. Could you tell us what happened exactly? No. It was as you said. <laughs> yeah, it was as you said. It was like just some stupid fighting going on 20 years ago. So it feels highly irrelevant to say the least. Uh, nowadays, black metal seems to be more appreciated in your country than before. Euronymous was a part of a uh, contest at Norwegian Airlines. The government has offered training for foreign diplomats to uh, black metal. What do you think about this 180 degree turn? I think that uh, the sheer quality of what was created in the 90s was quite telling in the way that one would expect that perhaps a, a larger musical environment mm -hmm. uh, would discover those qualities in black metal. Uh, uh, and rightfully so. I mean, I don't think that the black metal genre uh, has been uh, made to compromise with uh, the environment around it. Mm -hmm. It's rather the environment around um, the black metal scene that has come to understand mm -hmm. what kind of music quality, mm -hmm. musical qualities. Uh, are there and especially among you know the spearheading bands mm -hmm. uh, and since black metal is also a living organism it will live and breathe and it will evolve and it will grow and it will not be subject to the control of a few persons anymore mm -hmm. because uh, it cannot be it's like you know you could imagine being parent to a child at some point, the child will reach uh, a level of uh, size and maturity and be able to decide for her or uh, himself. Mm -hmm. And that's basically the same thing that is happening with this musical genre. That, uh, 
we that have been there for a long while and uh, and are still performers uh, of the black metal genre will have to start concentrating on our own work and let the larger genre live its own life mm -hmm. and for good and for bad there are lots of things that we dislike there are certain things that we still like a lot uh, we see that you know the core is still there and there are things happening that we could wish were different mm -hmm. but uh, I mean we can spend all our energy and efforts trying to you know mm -hmm. keep it what it once was we have to allow it to live its own life and to grow and to reach where it hasn't been before and examples uh, like those you mentioned are, are just you know a natural outcome of that and I don't see it to be that particular at all it still comes down to that what was created had such a strong core of creative mus musicianship that it actually calls for the attention of, of many people that are perhaps not understanding uh, the mindset or the deeper qualities pertain pertaining to the genre or, or those that you know mm -hmm. created it in the first place and and I think we simply have to accept it mm -hmm. Some musicians describe corpse paint as a part of a ritual that uh, gets them into a higher level of spirituality before the shows. How about you? Yeah, that is that is basically how it works for me, and I think it's a fantastic way of getting prepared and to steer the mind mm -hmm. uh, in a certain direction. It's like telling yourself that this is what's going on now. Mm -hmm. and I'm bringing all my focus and all my energy into this very project which is performing mm -hmm. uh, a black metal show mm -hmm. uh, please tell us about your influences uh, which bands or uh, musicians got you into the metal scene I think it was important that uh, I got to hear uh, Iron Fist with Motrad uh, at a pretty early age because I didn't really understand music mm -hmm. until I heard that song. I had heard, you know, hard rock and and metal even before that, but um, it didn't really do anything for me. It didn't really catch my attention. Mm -hmm. But there was just something that clicked when I heard that song, mm -hmm. uh, and then I actually became interested in hard music and quite quickly turned to even harder material than, than the regular hard rock and heavy metal and uh, I was basically always seeking extremes of various kinds and my experience with the first Bathory album was also very important in the way that I realized that there was something more than just you know the the pace of the music and how hard it was but there was you know a darker dimension to it that really spoke to me uh, and it fascinated me to a degree that I started to seek for something mm. of that kind uh, uh, and to bring it into my life and it took a few years before I, I really understood what was going on mm. but uh, eventually that kicked in and it was probably quite important making me what I still am today mm -hmm. Do you remember your first drum kit and the first songs you learned on drum? Not the first songs that I started to learn, but when I got the drum kit at the age of 14, 15, mm -hmm. I wanted to play thrash metal kind of music immediately. Mm -hmm. Not interested in learning the basics at all, which I should have done, of course, but uh, if I had been forced to, you know, learning to do the basic stuff before starting to play uh, faster and wilder music then I think I wouldn't have mm -hmm. cared to play mm -hmm. so uh, I had to do that at a later point simple as that basically and what were you like as a kid? that's very that's hard to say because uh, in one way you would rather have other persons around you describe mm -hmm. how you were uh, and I think that kids have uh, a very vague understanding of themselves mm -hmm. at a later point in life 
you may perhaps uh, realize more about the self but you don't really care much for mm -hmm. analyzing much as a kid I know I was the odd kid out <laughs> that's that's basically all I can say about like that. a black sheep or something not really rather like uh, mm -hmm. and quite odd and um, sometimes a little withdrawn person mm. that's how I remember it I cannot get into my own thoughts or mindsets from when I was a kid that's simply impossible for me mm -hmm. there are many memories that are not accessible at all because mm -hmm. I think I've changed so much as a person mm -hmm. that you know the the links aren't there in the brain anymore mm -hmm. they have ceased to exist you study at mathematics college in Oslo how do you uh, synchronize this busy musician lifestyle with your um, studies Mm, that was actually quite hard and that's probably the reason that I'm not working mm -hmm. uh, in the scientific field at all. That was what I set out to do uh, when I was younger, um, but I found the band which eventually grew mm -hmm. and I grew with the band and I wanted to pursue a career as a musician mm -hmm. rather than being a scientist or or any such thing that I mm -hmm. was originally planning to do and uh, I'm, I'm happy about that choice and I don't feel that there is a return to mm -hmm. my original plan anymore uh, I'd like to ask you about Saturn if you don't mind the last record was self-titled and usually that happens when bands want to renew themselves or to create an ultimate album in their discography uh, what does the last material really mean to you? that means that we reached a level of wholeness mm -hmm. there was a feeling that everything came together and that the album shows the true soul of Satyricon mm -hmm. for instance when working with that album we found that we managed to really make things groove much more we brought more dynamics into the material than, mm -hmm. than uh, we had been able to do before uh, and I think that the variety of the songs is, is really important uh, and the feeling that the album is a full journey mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it's fe it feels like you are traveling through that musical world which is satirical mm -hmm. or that perhaps you're reaching that world mm -hmm. through listening to the album perhaps both are valid mm -hmm. But that's really our feeling. I still feel that way about it. And it felt like we had to to name the album after ourselves. Mm -hmm. Anything else would have been wrong, actually. It's been 15 years ago when you released the Rebel Extravaganza that brought some fresh elements like industrial influences into black metal. What do you think about that record now? I still like it a lot. There are many things that I would have done differently today, but that's, you know how it is since you always develop and mature as a musician you mm -hmm. think that if you had been uh, able to redo some of the old songs you would have uh, chosen some different solutions many places perhaps different kinds of beats perhaps different kinds of structures for the song and things would have been much better if you just you know mm -hmm. had been able to do some of those things that one are presently able to, but uh, I also see each and every album uh, as a reflection of what the band was about at that mm -hmm. time, and there's, you know, a certain signature of the era as well, which mm -hmm. is important that you hear, you know, a zeitgeist in a way, um, which is all fine. Uh, the album was highly misunderstood when it was released the way I perceived it anyway mm -hmm. like people thought of it as very industrial and all that which I uh, definitely disagree with I think it's a very cold hostile black metal album uh, there are you know a few samples and so here and there uh, but that was basically all there, there isn't much in of the industrial mm -hmm. touch to it uh, it isn't you know that mechanic and there isn't that much samples and so there are mm -hmm. some 
some samples here and there and some intermessos that perhaps could be said to have an industrial feel to them but by and large it's um, it's uh, a really really freezingly cold black metal album that's mm -hmm. that's how it still sounds to me mm -hmm. and what did you think about the symphonic black metal bands like Cradle of Field when they showed up the only thing I want to say that the mention album Rebel Extravaganza was to some degree a reaction to what was going on in the black metal scene mm -hmm. at that point where everything was turning gothic mm -hmm. symphonic epic uh, harmonic melancholic mm -hmm. melodic like more and more the, the entire scene seemed to um, lose contact with its own roots and its own source mm -hmm. uh, and you know we felt that black metal should definitely be about darkness mm -hmm. like a key element and you could hardly hear any darkness in any bands that in, in the in the late 90s anymore it was like hidden beneath whales so female vocals and mm -hmm and synthesizers and orchestrated elements and it was you know also so pompous and it we felt it was getting out of hand uh, and I feel it's it doesn't come down to you know any one band like like uh, what you mentioned or even a few bands but it was more like the entire scene mm -hmm. seemed to seem to head down that one path uh, and we felt that as you know a spearhead band is also our responsibility to kind of show the way and perhaps do a little extra effort mm -hmm. to bring things in the direction that we feel is suitable for the genre mm -hmm. uh, and I think it was a very right move mm -hmm. and we also saw that many bands got inspired by the album despite uh, the rather hard crit criticism it was met with at the time of release, but still that it had such an impact on, on uh, the coming generation was probably very healthy. Mm -hmm. And that's a long time ago you performed with the uh, Norwegian National Opera Choir. What was the next step for the band after that? Do you have any special plans like that? Mm -hmm. We have several plans. Some are uh, rather concrete plans mm -hmm. others are more vague but uh, it's that kind of uh, events that that uh, Satyricon really like to take upon themselves mm -hmm. can you imagine 1349 doing something like that uh, nothing very similar to that something that would be unexpected or or um, very different mm -hmm. definitely like this band too uh, has a very creative source mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we have proven before that the band isn't uh, all that predictable mm -hmm. uh, which is something that we like uh, but there are no you know, definite plans, and we would never try to be different or or shocking just for being so. Mm -hmm. It would have to have a higher purpose, but that might really might happen because sometimes that's what the band needs. Okay. So, last questions. Please name your five uh, favorite albums of all time. First one is uh, easy. I've always held Under Funeral Moon in very, very high regard. Mm -hmm. And that is to me perhaps, you know, the very naked cold essence of black metal. Mm -hmm. uh, Under the Sign of the Black Mark is the Bathory album that I would have to mention. Mm -hmm. um, it is necessary to to bring in Thorns, mm -hmm. which to me is the ban or should I say the work of a man that that truly created and defined the Norwegian black metal sound. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Thorns is fantastic music and those old 
Thorn Screamer tapes for something that I perceive as the true source of uh, the Norwegian black metal expression. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess I have to mention uh, Klaus Schultz's album and listen quite a lot to, to those old electronic albums. Mm-hmm. Hypnotic, ambient, uh, at times extremely dark as well. I mean, there are hardly any black metal album being as as dark as uh, Irlicht from 1973 mm-hmm. so I would have to mention that one uh, the fifth one will be <coughs> difficult uh, but today I say uh, Black Earth by a German <coughs> band called Boron und der Klavogor fantastic <coughs> slow atmospheric hypnotic dark album mm-hmm. um, one of the albums that I listen to the most at home mm-hmm. it just sets the mood and that too is an example of a different kind of very dark music but uh, a kind that I, I, I really take to my heart mm-hmm. Doing a message to your fans we basically bring our messages when we are on stage performing that's mm-hmm. how, how we do it Good answer. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Yeah.